Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to do a, a picture frame with a classroom map, a farmhouse feel, exactly like we make it at footstepsandpass.com. Just like this one. Stay tuned and I'll show you how we do it right now. Hey guys, go ahead and get yourself um, some stock like this. The, we chose to go one inch thick, three quarter inches wide, so it cuts perfectly out of a one by. And then we put a quarter inch groove down the center of the board. If you don't know how to do that, I actually have multiple videos showing you how to do just that. I'll put a couple links up at the top of the screen here if you want to follow into that. Uh, I went ahead and cut mine to length and I got them stained brown just because that's what we do. So I'll show you how we're going to put these together. We use our uh, CNC laser machine to make these mats right here. So you can see this is uh, this shows you the, uh, the kindergartners and all that stuff. So it's a photo mat. So we'll get this framed up, show you something you can do with you laser. If you don't, I can post a link down below to show you where you can purchase these to put these together yourself. I'm actually making about 20 of these today. People love them so much. I'm finding myself more and more and more reaching for the X strong glue. It's really a strong, nice, thick glue. It's everything glue should be. If you don't believe me, you can check this link up above here where I compare it to uh, your type on 3 glue here, which is what I traditionally use. I think it makes my product better. So we'll just put some glue. This is such a thick glue. Normally I put a bead all the way down here, but this glue is so thick and strong. I just put four or five uh, drops in it now. Any excess glue. I'll leave those facing up so the glue drips down into the groove. And these are the sides. Okay. All right, so now I got this. And if you see here, I offset the groove so the back side's thicker. And that's to allow for a mat and your uh, points and whatnot to hold the uh, pictures in. Making sure we have the right side up, which would be the skinny side, not the thick side, Jay. That was pretty stupid. Here. Here. If you see, I don't even miter the corners. It really gives a nice farmhouse look. All we want to do is make sure this left side and the right side is visually appealing. Okay. Just show you what we're using in here is our pins. We're using three quarter inch pins because this is one inch thick. If you're using something thinner, make sure you use the appropriate size pen. Okay. Make my miter nice and tight. And then we'll just shoot some nails right through the face. Make this side butt joint nice and tight. Again, I just go right through the face. You could go through the back. However, I will say that uh, pins are just about invisible. You don't see them hardly. So now we're left with something like this. The frame, this is actually inside the frame, so it's not going anywhere. Once that glue sets up, this will be nice and strong. I'll go ahead and get the uh, other 20 of these put together like this, and then I'll show you how to make the mat and backs to hold in the photos. All right, guys, I didn't do 20, I exaggerated. It's probably about 10 here. So let's go ahead and get these backs done. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to take the measurements of the inside of the frame inside of the frame here to here, you know, so a piece of wood fits in there. We don't want it tight, so it's like installing a window, if you, you know. And you measure 21 and a half down here, 21 and a half up here. I actually want to make this a hair short, so I'm going to make it an eighth inch short at 20 and 3 eighths. By, make sure this fits all the way down. I'm going to make it 20 and 3 eighths by 8 inches. So that way it's loose, we can pop it in and out here real easy because the customer or you or whoever's going to get this is going to need to be able to take this in and out to put in photos. So 
So I'm going to use my scrap 8 inch plywood that I always have lying around. Uh, same one I used in my box when I showed you how to build the box. You can take it to that video. hold these backs in we're going to use something called points. I actually have a point gun which shoots points which you don't have to have however you can use uh, finish nails or screws or staples or however you want to hold it in for your project. I choose to go the professional route and use points. I'll show you what one of those looks like. Just let me give another gun. Here's a point that I'm going to be shooting right here. It's a flexible piece of steel like this that you see and normally see these in the back of all your picture frames. Like that right there. You can also use glazing points. I suppose those could work, but they're not going to be flexible. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get this shot in. Okay, so we've got the back here. Uh, everything's dry and ready to go. We'll take this piece of wood here and put it in the back just like this. And I like to put three, three points across the bottom and three points across the top. And then that makes it so the customer or whomever can come and bend these points up and be able to pop this out, install their pictures. And then, well, it's supposed to be easy. I can easily put this back down in here. Which is, I think I might make this uh, a little narrower on the other pieces. And there yourself is a finished product which we actually sell these pretty good. So this would be a good money maker for you and your lasering business if you're a carpenter with a laser or some sort of CNC machine to make something like this. You can make it with a scroll saw, but you're not gonna be able to compete with somebody like me that has a, a CNC laser. But if you wanna make it for yourself, that's a different story. I hope you can make something like this out of your wood shop. Uh, if you do, leave a comment down below. Let me know if something you tried to make don't forget to subscribe if you want more tips and tricks on things that sell to be made in your wood shop. I'm Jay and this is my to-do list. Thanks for stopping.